talking about open SCAD transformations. Those are the uh, operations you can use to relocate or scale or rotate other objects. Let's start with a sphere whose radius is 50. Hit preview and there we have a sphere whose radius is 50. A translation, I'm going to write my code like this because you'll see in a minute it'll allow me to do things like comment out this line of code here while keeping the line next to it because OpenSCAD doesn't care about white space the translate without a semicolon here says take what follows and then move it somewhere alright so let's do this let's translate to 50 in the x-axis 0 in the y and 0 in the z don't move it in the uh, relative to y and z axes, just move it relative to the x. And I hit preview, and now I've taken my sphere whose radius is 50 and moved it to the positive direction of the x axis. You can see the legend down here, at positive x says this way. And since the radius is 50, it'll just kiss the origin right here on the left side. Okay? We can also move it to, say, 50 in the y axis. So now I've moved it not only in the x50, I've also moved it in the y axis by 50. Let's also move it in the z axis. Let's move it 25 units to positive z. It should now lift up like so, all right? Not a problem. You can also move it negative instead of positive. That's negative, <coughs> excuse me, 50 in the x, positive 50 in the y, and then positive 25 in the z just as easily go negative 25 in the Z as well, no problem. All right, that's all there really is to translations. Not a problem, moving it around. Let's now do a, a scale. If I want to scale something, it's based on a percentage. So 100% size in X, Y, and Z really means don't do anything at all. Render it the same way you would as if I did not scale it at all. Okay. Let's move uh, scale it 50% in the Y axis. So now I took the sphere that I created down here and I said squish it so that it's only half as big in the Y axis here. But leave the X and Z alone. Alright, there you have that. If I squished it also in the Z axis, say, now it's half as big in the Z and half as big in the Y, but still 100 degrees or 100 uh, units uh, diameter in the X, a radius of 50 here and 50 there and so on. All right, that's all you have to do for scaling, not a problem. Now there's another way to resize something using a command called resize. There's another way to scale it, really. Uh, let's say you want, uh, well, first of all, let's go back and remember what our sphere looks like, okay? The resize command says, take what follows, all right? Again, notice there's no semicolon here. This is all one, uh, one, one, one function, one expression in OpenSCAD. Take what follows and make it fit in a cube or a cuboid space whose dimensions are uh, 100 by, say, 50 by 20. Okay? Preview that. Well, what happened here? I created a sphere that uh, whose radius is 50, and I said make it fit in a box whose dimensions are 100. Okay? That's still a radius of 50. So it didn't really change the x dimension at all. Then I said make it so that the y axis, the sphere cannot only cannot be bigger than 50 in its diameter here, right? So that's a 25 uh, unit radius. And the z must fit into 20. So you can see here, you can see the tick mark there. That's the 10 and the minus 10. So it made it fit into a cube whose dimensions are these. So this is another way to scale it, and it might be more convenient to just define a cube and let it figure out how big it needs to be. All right.
fine. So the, what, is the, what, what next? We can uh, rotate something. Let's create another kind of a shape. Let's use a cylinder. I want an asymmetric shape so that it's more obvious which side is up and down. A sphere is too symmetric. So let's say D1 equals um, 50, D2 equals 20, height equals 100. Hit preview. There you go. Some other iconic thing. Let's now look at what it means to rotate this thing in these three axes. In the x-axis, let's uh, rotate it 10 degrees. And let's not rotate it in the y or z axes. If I hit preview, look what happened here. This is the x-axis here. It uses what's called the right-hand rule. If you hold up your right hand and you put your thumb, aim it in the positive x direction, the rest of your fingers point in the direction in which this thing would rotate. Okay. So the right-hand rule says the top should come towards me if the rotation is positive. If it's negative, it would go away from me. Okay, Let's put a bigger number in there to emphasize it some more. Right? And this is rotated only around the x-axis because I left the other one set to 0. Here we are going to rotate around y. What's it going to do when we do this? Your thumb goes up here. Your rest of your fingers point around this way, so it should swing the top to the right. And that's what we get. Again, now it's rotating only around Y because I didn't put any values in for X or Z. If I rotate it around Z, what happens is it's spinning it around this way. But since it's perfectly symmetric, you can't really see what's going on. Let's put that back to zero and do nothing, OK? Let's combine a rotate with a translate. Then we'll see better what's going on in Z. So let's move it over to 20 in the X. Well, no, let's move it really far out there. Let's move it 100 in X and nowhere else in Y or Z. Okay, so you can see I moved it over to the 100 marker here. Translated it over to positive 100. I did not move it in Y or Z. Rotated 0, 0, 0 means I didn't do any rotation, which is the same as saying don't rotate it at all. Okay, now let's rotate it in the X axis. Remember, right hand rule means the top will come towards me. That shouldn't be too surprising. That's what it basically did last time. Let's go a little more. Okay. Oops, what did I do? 350. Well, that's actually just short of 360, which would come all the way back to itself, which is actually uh, the same thing as going all the way around, almost all the way around. So that's an interesting typographic error. Okay. 35 degrees, right-hand rule in X, point the top towards me. Okay, now let's look at what happens if we move, rotate it in Z. Oops, I keep making that mistake. Let's first look at it unrotated, just translated, no rotated. Now we'll, we'll take the cylinder, translate it, then we will rotate it 30 degrees in Z. And you'll notice it's moving around the Z axis this way. Again, right hand rule, thumb up this way, your fingers point around this way. So it's going counterclockwise as we increase these values. Let's go 100 degrees. So 90 would be up this way. That would be 90 plus 10, 120. We keep on going around counterclockwise. If you said negative 50, that would be clockwise going down this way. I'm remembering it started here. And it came down and around here. Again, it's rotating it. It's not just moving it down. Because if it just moved it down, if we just translated it, it would be way over here, right? Because it started at 100 on the x. OK. Negative. Well, let's stay with the positive ones for now. All right. So what happens now if I rotate it on more than one axis at the same time? When you do translations or scales, it doesn't really matter which one you do in what order. If I moved, uh, translated it to the right by 100, and then I translated uh, it up in the Y by 50, I'd come over 100 and up 50, and I'd end up somewhere over here. If I did it 50 first this way and 100 worth uh, in, in X that way, I'd still end up in the same spot. So we never really cared about order. Now we care about order. What would happen if? The uh, shape was over here. I, I rotated it 
up like this with my 50. Okay, hit preview, make sure I didn't change the code. All right. Then I rotated it in the X axis. If that was true, it would then come up and around like this. Okay. If I rotated it in X first, let's just rotate it in X. It would first do this. Then it would rotate this in Z. So what would happen is, what's the difference, right? If this thing came down like this and then this angled piece came around, the base of this shape would stay centered on this on the XY plane. Okay? On the other hand, if it did the Z rotation first and moved it over here, then it did the X rotation. It would rotate it around X, and the whole thing would come up in the air like that. So order will matter with these rotations, okay? So what is the order? Well, I happen to know it will do X, then it will do Y, then it will do Z. Therefore, if it comes over here, the translation, we then rotate it around X. Now we rotate around Z. It'll stay seated on the X-way plane. All right, and that's just what it did. Of course, it's pointing in another direction because it's rotating it around Z now. Okay. Now, if you did want to do it in the other order, what you would have to do is force it to rotate in the Z first, which you can do by just simply rotating an image that has already been rotated. Now, you moved it in, uh, uh, rather in, uh, in, in Z, moved it over here, and then you moved it up in the X. So order matters. Keep that in mind. There you have it. Those are your transformations on uh, some of the basic uh, fundamental solids.